I knew of a person one time who had a difficulty in having a daily meditation practice. It just seemed pretty daunting. Came back from work, the idea of sitting for an hour defeated him right there. So he wasn't even sitting for a minute. So he asked his teacher what to do, and the teacher said, well, make a vow that every day you're going to get into the meditation posture. And as for the amount of time it's going, you're going to stay in meditation, that's really up to you. But the vow is to get into the posture. So the guy tried that and found that he could actually sit for quite a bit longer than he thought. Some days it was just getting into the posture and then getting out. Another days he found that he could sit quite a lot longer, sometimes even longer than an hour. Once you get into position, the mind settles down, it feels good, it's, you realize you don't really want to get up again. This reflects a teaching the Buddha gave one time, which is that when the mind is in an unskillful state, just giving rise to a finger snap of a skillful mind state has value. If the idea of trying to maintain it is too much or seems too daunting, at the very least, allow yourself to think that thought or develop a good quality in the mind. You know, however long you're going to be able to stick with it, that's another matter, but at the very least, Get started. When you find you can do it, then you can start again and start again until it, in a John Cha's example, pouring water from a teapot. If you tip it just a little bit, there'll be just a drop, and then a drop, and then a drop. And then if you tip a little bit more, there's drop, 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 and then the drops get so frequent that they become a continuous stream of water. So don't look down on those little efforts to give rise to skillful qualities, even if it seems that unskillful qualities of mind are overwhelming. Over time, those skillful qualities begin to gather. Or in the Buddha's image, it's like a, a water jar. Even though the water is falling in drops, the jar eventually becomes full. This falls under the heading of right exertion, and particularly the exertion to give rise to skillful qualities. There are basically two levels. One is when you know that the mind is immersed in an unskillful state, and it just seems discouraging to try to turn it around. Which, of course, it's your divine that's telling you, right? trying to keep you discouraged so they can stay with whatever course that they've already determined. And this is where it's important to remember that just a moment of mindfulness or a moment of goodwill has its value. At the very least, you have a brief respite and gaining some perspective on things. It also overcomes that tendency that the mind has that once it's started on an unskillful course, it seems to tell itself, well, I'm committed to this. I'm just going to follow it through. You're not committed. You haven't made a promise to anybody that you're going to think in unskillful ways or indulge in unskillful habits. So to put a little stop to that, even if it's just a momentary stop, reminding yourself, you know, what would a John Munn say? What would the Buddha say? any of John that you respect, any teacher you respect. That little bit of mindfulness, that little bit of alertness can help pull you out. Sometimes it's just the moment is enough. You realize, my gosh, I don't want to continue in this state. I want to get out. That becomes the impulse to, to let it go. There are other times when you're not conscious of the fact that the mind is in an unskillful state. Things seem to be going pretty well. Everything seems to be pretty innocent. But you're not sure. Is there something more? This is where it gets more difficult, because the mind does have its rhythms. 
sometimes what seems like a plateau or a stagnant period is just a time where your mind is gathering its forces. There's been an arc to your practice and it's gotten to a higher spot, but then the, the foundation isn't there. And the mind's got to fill in, or things are going to be reorganized, like the shifting of bits of glass in a kaleidoscope. Things have to fall into place for a while. But if there comes a point where you begin to wonder, okay, is this getting stagnant? You can test it. Some of the tests are to sit for longer than you normally do, take on a precept that you haven't been practicing, push the practice a little bit, try to get more more interested in the breath, for instance. Try to be more precise in your observation of the breath. Because if things are getting stale, often it's a time it's <clears throat> often it's a sign that you're not paying careful attention. Because the breath, when it's really good, is really good. It really is nourishing. There really is a strong sense of well being that comes as you settle in and allow the breath energy to surround you. You want to feel nourished by the practice. If there's not a sense of nourishment, because something's lacking, something's missing. And often it's just that. The practice has gotten mechanical. You go through the motions, but you're not really paying close attention. And the context of right exertion, this is called upholding your intent, the word intent, jitta there. I mean the intention, the intentness, excuse me. With what you're doing this. You're paying close attention to what you're doing each second that you're aware of. If you're doing the practice with one eye on the practice and another eye something someplace else. Okay, you're not going to get the full results because you're not paying full attention. So at the least little thing coming up, you want to be alert to it. You want to be alive to it. Because there are times when it doesn't seem like anything much unskillful is happening in the mind, but there are little blips, blips, blips here and there. And if you're not paying careful attention, they don't seem like much at all. When they talk about the subconscious or unconscious processes of the mind, it's not like they're totally buried. They show their, their shadows, they show little images, little flashes here and there. And if you're really, really still, you can see them. It's like the subliminal messages they sometimes send over TV stations. If the mind is really still, it can see them. If you're not still, you just run right past. So pay careful attention to what you're doing. Careful attention to what's going on in the mind. Get the mind really, really still. Have a strong sense of being very nourished by being here. If the breath isn't nourishing, okay, experiment. Don't let things get mechanical. And this way you can give rise to skillful states that haven't been there before. That's an important part of right exertion. 